Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Today, well last week we talked about uh, the my favorite sci-fi horror uh, media. This week we are talking about my favorite fantasy. Not fantasy horror or grimdark or any of that stuff, but my favorite uh, fantasy content. Um, I think they are all, no, they're not all, they're not all books. Uh, there's some movies in here. Anyways, uh, we're going to jump right into it. On with the show. Number five. So at number five, we have the Lord of the Rings franchise, books, movies, all that stuff. Uh, that's down, it's, it's number five easily. Again, uh, these lists, unless I say otherwise, are in... I get this wrong every time, but it's from five to one. They are in that order from uh, from the fifth one to the first to my favorite. I don't know how else to put it. I think it's ascending. I'm not sure if it's descending. I think it's ascending. Whatever. Let's get let's get on with it. But Lord of the Rings uh, is a classic. It's a favorite of mine. For the longest time, Hop the Hobbit was uh, above it. Um, and I have to kind of backtrack to me not being able to finish the Lord of the Rings series. Uh, this is the last time I tried, but I was able to finish The Hobbit. Um, the, the reasoning I, I'm giving for this is the movies. Um, I think the movies are the, the best version of the books. Um, and I know pe I know there's going to be people who are upset, but I think Tolkien went on too long, too long, too long. And with The Hobbit novel, the, the book is great but it's rather basic and the movies are absolutely horrible. So when I mash everything together, I have to look at Lord of the Rings as my favorite of that quadrilogy or whatever you want to call it, my favorite of that uh, storyline because the, I love the movie so much. Um, I might like the Hobbit book a little bit better, but when I compile everything together, uh, I, I think I still have to point to the movies as they are that big of an achievement. Number Four. Number four is a movie uh, with Tim Curry and Tom Cruise, and it is Legend. Um, this has long been... Uh, it's funny because I, I can't stand uh, Tom Cruise. I hate Tom Cruise. Love everything about Tim Curry. Um, I, I hate that he's in such ill health. Uh, I believe he had a stroke, uh, but he's one of my favorite actors of all times. Um, I wouldn't love the Congo movie as much as I did if they hadn't have added... Uh, Curry's character because that character is not in the book. But anyways, we're talking about Legend. This, I believe it's directed by Ridley Scott, is an absolutely gorgeous film to look at. Um, it is so well acted. The, the whole thing, the, the story revolves around, I believe they're trying to uh, get a unicorn horn back from this demonic devil character played by Curry. And if I'm absolutely honest, this is only one of maybe five times in Tom Cruise's career that he actually had to act. Um, probably because it was one of his first movies and he had to step up. But ever since, uh, I, I, he, he plays Tom Cruise in everything. Then again, so does Brad Pitt and so does Angelina Jolie. These are actors who started off acting and now they just play themselves in every single movie. They, they've gotten lazy. But Legend is one of those films that is an absolute classic to me and it, it's a beauty to behold and I always have fun watching it. Number three. At number three is a recent favorite of mine, a uh, recent addition to this list, as it were, and that is the Dandelion Dynasty novels by Ken Liu. Um, I, I don't know exactly why. I haven't pinpointed exactly what I love about this series. I keep saying it's because it's not a Western fantasy, fantasy, um, a Western fantasy. And uh, what I mean by that is like, a, you know, a white people fantasy. Um, this this is a, a alternate history kind of Chinese, uh, alternate Chinese history. It's got it's got steampunk elements. It's got high fantasy. It's got brutal violence. It has amazing battle sequences, uh, the characters are so in-depth and well put together, the diversity is on point, there's representation of damn near everybody, uh, it's, the, it's one of those, one of those books, those series so far, and The Veiled Throne comes out in November, I'm super stoked for that, but, uh, it's one of those series that I, 
never want to end. But then you look over and you have like Robert Jordan with his uh, 14 book co series that I couldn't even get past the second book. And then you have Brandon Sanderson with his 10 book. In, in, it's not complete. It's only on book four. I got bored 300 pages in the first book. The, there's something different about Ken Liu that his his characters truly spoke to me, which is funny because you, you hear it all the time. I can't, uh, especially white people, I can't connect to these characters. Well, I connected more to these characters than I do any of the any of the uh, billion uh, white fantasy uh, characters out there. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's just a, a better character characterization, period. Um, maybe it is because it's a different culture and I just like new things because I don't know much about Chinese history and it was an absolute joy to read read about it and it was an absolute joy to go back and research this stuff and find out exactly what stuff Liu took to to you know and embellished on and changed it was fantastic if you have not read this series i i implore you go out and get the grace of kings um i got hard covers on the way i'll probably do that with uh, my next book haul uh i sent my paperbacks to my friend terry and I don't normally do that. I don't normally go out and buy, unless it's something like Stephen King, Joe Hill, Caroline Kepnes, that kind of thing, where I own all the paperbacks and all the hardcovers that they've ever released. Um, so you know I love this. And I, I own the audiobooks for the Leo books also. But anyways, um, please go out and check these out, um, if, especially if you don't like fantasy. If you have an issue with fantasy and it bores you to tears, definitely try this guy out. Number two. Number two is a fantasy movie that I never hear anybody talking about. It is a cult favorite. It has a cult following, um, but I love it just because it is so unique, um, just because it is so, they did so much with such a small budget, and that is the movie Ink from 2009, I believe. Th this, this story Hello, dirt, we meet again. I mean, that quote right there, when you watch this movie or if you have seen this movie, that quote, hello, dirt, we meet again, fantastic. I mean, the whole thing is fantastic, but th there was so much humor and it was such a light fantasy with such dark implications. It was shot so dark, it was, but there was an uh, underlying uh, insidious darkness to it that I really, really loved. And that kind of made it more of a horror movie than a fantasy. But I think that's why I liked it as much as I did, because it was so unique, and I'd never seen anything like it before. Um, I don't want to say too much about this one, because it is, it is such a cult favorite, cult classic. So if you have not seen this movie, please go out and, and check it out. Um, it's, it's super cheap on Amazon right now. I had to look it up last night, because um, I don't actually own a copy, and I'd forgotten about it. But once I started thinking about uh, my top five fantasy, uh, because... Uh, I, it, was, it was one of those things where I literally had to go searching out things that I had watched. Um, and I was going, going through a list of top five fantasy things, and I came across Ink. I was like, yes, that I need that. So I went over there, and I had to put it on this list. So yeah, that's your number two. Number one. And number one is, of course, The Dark Tower. I mean, come on, folks. You, you knew it was going to be here. I'm a huge Stephen King fan. Uh, Roland's journey is absolutely amazing to me. Uh, yes, I would say my second least favorite, the uh, what I would consider the second worst book Stephen King has ever written, is the fourth book in the series. And the sixth book in the series leaves a lot to be desired. Um, but I think if we look at Song of Susanna, which is book six, I think if we look at that... If we look at Wolves, Susanna, and the final book, The Dark Tower, if we put all of those together, I think they make one final amazing novel. But separately, they do not stand well alone. Whereas uh, The Gunslinger, um, Drawing of the Three, The Wastelands, and Wizard and Glass, which I can't, I absolutely cannot stand, one of the worst books I've ever read, period. Um, the, th those books stand alone. I, I feel, other than maybe the beginning of, uh, of Wizard and Glass, because, you know, Blaine the Pain. But anyways, so yeah, my number one is The Dark Tower. You guys knew it was coming. Uh, I knew it was coming. Everybody knew it was coming, uh, because I don't like fantasy. And uh, Stephen King did enough to do, to change, uh, to, to have Western elements, um, even samurai film elements, so many different elements it, and, and there's some Harry Potter in there. There's some uh, Marvel comics in there. There's all different. There's some Wizard of Oz in there. It is a story about story, uh, and I th I think that alone makes it my number one. 
So that has been my top five fantasy. This is the second most requested top five Friday I have ever received. Um, and of course, I didn't do it before now because... I don't care too much for fantasy, so it's really odd, and I know there's going to be comments, how are you going to do a top five fantasy when you don't like fantasy? Well, I just did. So leave all of your favorite uh, fantasy stuff, whether it be books, video games, uh, any kind of media, movies, it doesn't matter. Leave all that stuff down there in the doobly-doo. Do your own top five list. Do 10, do 20, I don't care. Leave all that down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.